saw loading has become an increasingly popular way for people to manage symptoms of orthostatic intolerance. And it's kind of meant to be done in the short term, in the acute phase, as we call it. But what we're finding is more and more people are pursuing that salt loading over longer and longer and longer bits of time. So the question becomes, is that safe? Is that a good thing to be doing over a long period of time? Some of the ways that I would think about it, number one, we're using salt as a way to augment blood volume to be able to increase the amount of blood in the system. If there's more blood in the system, it's easier that to kind of hijack having to use neurological controls to be able to shift blood flow. And we're just focusing on filling all of the arteries at one time, trying to augment it that way, which can be effective. But also it means that we're relying on kind of overriding or hijacking some of the signals that we would have that normally stimulate our kidneys to be able to control the overall amount of blood volume and the amount of salt in the system. That's one way to do it. But we do know that loading salt in high, high quantities like that over time can have detrimental effects, particularly on our kidneys and in some cases on the heart. But what I think is more empowering and much more cool is actually if we rewind that tape a long way and we look at like well where does that reflex come from that affects the kidneys and one of the things we know is that it's actually stimulation of the carotid baroreceptors so in the carotid sinus the pressure systems actually send a signal to the brain and then the brain is what sends the signals down to the kidneys to be able to control the amount of blood flow going in and out of the kidneys and then therefore the renin and your tensin aldosterone cycle will stay clear of that but the main thing to know is that the core of that system starts with the release of renin. The release of renin comes from the brain. In these cases where we're using salt loading and it's maybe mildly effective for short periods of time, those are cases where we want to look at how well is that carotid system able to stimulate the brain? How well are we detecting the pressure within the system? How much blood is flowing to our brain? How are we using that to augment the kidneys? That's actually a really cool way to think about it so we can actually change the signaling to start with so that we don't have to overload the kidneys and be able to try to hijack that renin-angiotensin-aldosterone cycle. And that is a super cool way to think about it.